In this example, we're given a function y equals x squared minus 2x minus 3. We need to find the vertex, the domain, and the range, and then we need to sketch the graph. Well, what type of function do I have here? Notice the highest exponent on any of the x's is a 2, so it's a quadratic function, and when we graph it, we're going to get a parabola. So the first thing we need to do for our parabola is to find the vertex. Our function is given in general form, and when an equation is given in general form, the easiest way to find the vertex is to use a formula. You need to know the formula, and that says the x value of the vertex equals negative b over 2a. Well, what do we mean by a and b? Remember, we're going to compare it to this form of a parabola, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So a is the coefficient of the x squared term. So in our case, a is equal to what number are we too efficient to write in front of that x squared? A 1. And b is the coefficient of the x term, so it is negative 2. So the x value of the vertex equals negative, and what is b? It is a negative 2 over 2 times a, where a is 1. So what is the opposite of a negative 2? It's positive 2 over 2 times 1 is 2. So the x value of the vertex is at the coefficient 1. Now to find the y value of the vertex, all we have to do is plug 1 into our original equation. So y equals x squared, so it's going to be 1 squared minus 2 times x, which is 1, minus 3. So y equals 1 squared is 1 minus 2 times 1, that's minus 2 minus 3. So y equals 1 minus 2 is negative 1, negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4. So I now know my vertex is at the coordinates 1, negative 4. Next, we need to find the domain and the range. And to do that, we only need a very basic sketch of the graph. We need to know which way the parabola is going to open. In this case, a is positive 1, and if a is bigger than 0, is a positive number, then the parabola will open up. And what I'm going to do is do a super basic sketch of the graph. My vertex is at 1, negative 4, so it's going to be about here and my parabola is going to open up. Notice I said a very basic graph. Now we have the basic sketch of the graph. We're ready to find the domain and the range. Remember, domain comes from the x values. Range comes, comes from the y values. So for every quadratic function, it's very easy. The domain is always all real numbers, and in interval notation, that's negative infinity to positive infinity. If you look at the arrows on the end of the parabola, this indicates it keeps going up and to the left. This one keeps indicating it goes up and to the right. So there's nothing stopping it going from negative infinity to positive infinity in the x direction. The range is just a tiny bit more complicated. Remember, the range is the y values. And if I come in from my graph from down below in this region, is there a graph down here? Are there any points? No. So my range hasn't started yet. Any points? No. This is the very first point I hit on the graph coming from down from negative infinity. And what's this y value here? That y value is the y value of the vertex, which is at negative 4. There's a point, so I include that with a square bracket. So my range starts at negative 4, including the negative 4 with a square bracket. And where does it go to? 
So if I move my graph, go my ruler, sorry, going up, do I still have a graph? Do I still have a graph? Is it going to keep going with those arrows? Yes, my graph is going to keep going on up to positive infinity. So my range is square bracket negative four comma positive infinity. So that has found the domain and the range. Now I need to sketch the graph. And to sketch it in a bit more detail, I need some more accurate points. So let me go to my next slide. And here I've already put on the information we already found, the vertex, it opens up my domain and range. So my vertex is at the point 1, negative 4. So right now, I only have one accurate point on the graph. Let's find a couple more accurate points. The y-intercept, we find that by setting x equal to 0. So that means plug 0 in for every x up here. So y equals 0 squared minus 2 times 0 minus 3. Well, these two go to zero, so it's negative three. So the y-intercept is at zero, negative three. So here's my y-intercept. Start at the origin, go down three. There's my y-intercept. X-intercepts you find by setting y equal to zero. So up here, I'm going to get zero equals x squared minus 2x minus 3. So we're going to have to solve this quadratic equation. This is one of the easier ones to factor since a, the leading coefficient on the x squared, is 1. So I'm going to look for two numbers that multiply to 1 times negative 3, which is negative 3, and they need to add to the b term which is negative 2. Not too many choices. Multiply to a negative. Signs are different. Add to a negative. The bigger one has to be the negative one. So 1 times negative 3 is negative 3, and 1 plus a negative 3 equals negative 2, which is what I'm looking for. And since a was 1, these are my factors. So I get 0 equals x plus 1 times x minus 3. Set each factor equal to 0. I get x plus 1 equals 0. Subtract 1 from both sides, get x equal to negative 1. Set the other factor equal to 0. x minus 3 equals 0. Add 3 to both sides, x equals 3. Be careful, this represents two x-intercepts. Don't combine it into one point. So the coordinates are for the first x-intercept, negative 1. What's the y-coordinate? 0. And my second x-intercept is 3, comma, 0. So now I can plot those two points, negative 1, 0, and 3, 0. One other piece of information about a parabola I haven't talked about yet is the axis of symmetry. That is a vertical line through the vertex. So vertical lines have the equation x equals something. What's this case? x equals 1 since it goes through the vertex. And if I draw a vertical line through my vertex, my graph is going to be symmetric about that line. That will help me get another point because here I have a point one unit to the left. So if I go horizontally one unit to the right, I get another point. Now I have five points on my graph. That's plenty to draw my parabola. It's not going to look very pretty on this tablet since the screen is so slick. So that's about as good as my parabolas get. Don't forget to put arrows on both ends. And it's very important that the graph does not go below the vertex point because that vertex is the minimum y value that parabola takes on.